period. So even the sort of documentation that we prepared uh, to to allow us movement was some. Sometimes it, you know there were, there were just different views from different you know, uh, people, authorities. But uh, eventually, I mean, she was buried uh, with dignity. However, um, I think and, and she she lived predominantly in Swaziland, and that's where I grew up. Uh, that's where she married. Um, however, uh, after my father passed away, we then moved back to South Africa. So she had a number of relatives and friends still in Swaziland who would have wanted to actually uh, be there for her for, for her actual burial. So I think this was the sort of the biggest impact in terms of it being a fully, uh, you know, a complete sort of burial, if you, if you, if you want to call it that. Aputumani, uh, thank you so much for that. I mean, it takes a lot to be able to share your story like that publicly, and uh, I believe your contribution is going to play a role and make a lot of people aware about the challenges of COVID-19 and how it's affected millions of people across the globe. I'm going to try again with uh, number 43, um, the brains of number 43, uh, a journey, a simple human story in lockdown. Uh, Zweli Banzi, thank you once more for joining us. Uh, I hope you can hear me loud and clear. I wanted to get an idea of where the concept came from and why did you pick the number 43? I thank you, Jacob. I hope you can hear me now. Jacob? I can hear you loud and clear. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, number 43 Chiloni Park is a house in Swaziland that hosted a number of, of, of our South African liberation people, uh, people that fought for our independence, including um, the general of the current South African Defense Force and many others. So the concept of number 43 comes from the, of this home that hosted and participated in the struggle for the independence of South Africa. With regards to this book specifically, um, what we're trying to do here is record experience and history of current, for the current and future generation. This is a pandemic, COVID-19, that is said to be similar or even worse than the 1918 Spanish flu. So as an ordinary family separated by the lockdown, some outside the country, others in different provinces, we found a platform to sort of maintain contact and encourage each other um, throughout this, this process. So um, that's the whole idea or concept uh, behind the book, to share experiences to encourage each other in, in, in separation. And, and for me, the biggest surprise um, of, of, of this book and conversations is the conversations we had in the family. We, we spoke about the state of the nation. We spoke about inequalities, economic inequalities in the country. We spoke about social justice issues such as gender-based violence, issues that you know, in, within a family context, we never find time to be open and frank and, and talk to each other about. So we share those, those conversations in the book. And, and secondly, um, interesting for me as well was the, the democratic nature that this platform uh, provided for us. You had father and daughter debating. You had Unkulu, our grandfather, who is 96 years old, um, telling us and sharing his experiences um, of, of difficult conditions that he experienced during the, the Second World War and the current, compared, comparing it with the current. We had uh, connections with Meran, uh, the lady you are going to talk to, in China sharing her experiences and, and how they were managing um, uh, the lockdown there and, and how she missed home and how she kept in contact home. With, with people at home. So it's it, it's all those things contained in in, a, in 80 pages of excitement, of pain, um, and, and, and um, you know, opening up as family. Uh, Zuli Banzi, what do you expect people to, to take from this book once they've, once they've read it? Uh, what's, what's the final message that you're trying to get out there? The final message is that there's hope. Um, 
there's hope after a difficult um, situation, after a difficult lockdown. Um, the final message should be that um, as a society, we are there, we should be there for each other. And and from um, I'm, I'm, I'm a policy pers person, so from a policy government perspective, this presents an opportunity to register the potential of a connected society, digitally connected society. We can close gaps between each other as families, as society, through digitization. So this 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 appeals to uh, the social us as families as people. It also appeals to um, influence, I suppose, policymakers, and and see at the, the the opportunity that the um, technology uh, also presents for all of us. Number 43, COVID-19 journey, a simple human story in lockdown. We are chatting to Zweli Banzi Masilela. He's been giving us an idea on where the concept came from and why he had to put together this book. Um, we're going to go to a quick ad break. When we come back, we'll continue chatting to Zweli Banzi Masilela and we'll be joined by Mapule Ranta, who was also affected by COVID-19 all the way in China. Stay with us. It is Weekend Dawn on Channel 405. It is Weekend Dawn on Channel 405. Uh, we're chatting about the number 43 COVID-19 journey, a simple human story in lockdown. We've been chatting to Zweli Banzi Masilela, uh, who is uh, the brains behind this beautiful book that is going to be uh, launched digitally today. And uh, one of the contributors as well on the book is Mapule Ranto. Uh, she was affected by COVID-19 all the way in China, where she currently resides. And uh, we earlier spoke to Mapule to Mani Masilela as well. But now we do have on the line um, Mapule Rantla. Mapule, thank you so much for joining us on Weekend Dawn. Good morning to you. Um, can you tell me why did you think it was important for you to be a contributor on this book? And considering the fact that you were affected by COVID-19 in China, where it uh, originated, um, how did you manage? Um, it has been very tough um, and also, you know, this um, outbreak has caused a lot of loss as well as fear around the world and a lot of uncertainty. So I just thought that it would be great for myself to um, contribute towards the book. All right. And uh, in terms of your recovery, um, how did you go about recovering and the experience of uh, uh, being a COVID-19 victim and also not alarming your family who are obviously back here at home in South Africa? Yes, I mean, I think I was never mentally ready for this. I don't think anyone is ever ready um, or was ever ready. Or the, um, rather, even also when it comes to finances and things like that, it has been so challenging. But I've had the support from uh, the school that I am um, an English teacher at. Um, they were very uh, helpful and they made sure that I have been taken care of. How are things right now in China? What's the mood like? I mean, things are much better, I must say. Gradually, um, we have been able to adjust. I mean, it's not a new normal. We are still wearing our masks, especially when we are going to um, and other areas. All right, Mapule Rantla, thank you so much for your time. She was uh, affected by COVID-19 in China, and she was joining us to chat to us about uh, her contribution on the book number 43, COVID-19 Journey, A Simple Human Story in Lockdown. Look out for that. It actually virtually launches uh, today. That, of course, wraps up that discussion with uh, this book, which is uh, virtually launching today. Earlier, we did speak to uh, Maputumani Masilela. He was the brains behind it. But time now to almost get uh, out of the show. Remember, if you want to continue the conversation, hashtag Weekend Dawn on 405. Our Twitter handles at 405 Mornings or Newsroom 405.
And you're welcome to join in the conversation, whether it be a, a comment about the news bulletin, and we're talking about the PPE scandals, our newspaper contributor, uh, Ziandan Ngobo, who joined us a little earlier. She's our senior political reporter right here at Newsroom Africa. Or whether you want to chat about sports, what will be happening a little later today when it comes to the UEFA Champions League final that will be against uh, Bayern Munich and PSG. To Mikhase, of course, putting her money on Bayern Munich. My money is, of course, on Bayern Munich as well, but I think throughout the season I think PSG played way better but of course Stu Mikhazo will be telling me what she thinks a little later when we are about to wrap up the show. Of course like I said, if you want to continue the conversation that hashtag Weekend Dawn on 405. So let me turn things around right now and chat to Liesl and bring her 